Good morning and welcome to Utopia Farms. I'm Lynn. Thanks for joining us. Let's go on inside and see what today has in store for us. Arnie, he already fed our bottle babies, but Kit was here. She saw me coming getting the empty bottles and she came over, so I thought it was a good time to look at her while the others aren't jumping around. Can you see her? She's got perfect conformation and she's built perfectly. She's got a little waggy tail. Hi, you're looking very nice for a little girl. For those of you who don't know Kit, uh, she was born, she was only like a pound. She's very, very tiny. And uh, so we took her off her mom so that she wouldn't get injured. And uh, we've been raising her with a bottle with two other orphans. And she's actually just done fantastic. Oftentimes these uh, kind of shoes, we're thinking she's maybe a little bit premature. They often don't do so well. But uh, she's grown on extremely well. Show them how nice you stand, baby. There you go. You are a sweetheart. Anyway, we're very happy with uh, her progress. And uh, as I tell people, this is the magic spot. If you want a sheep to freeze and just stand still, you rub their chest. Dogs are the same way. <laughs> it keeps them still for quite a way. Uh, quite a while, I mean. Hi. You're a sweetheart. You did a good job. You're growing really well. Really well. Hard to believe, but two days have already passed since those uh, two little ewe lambs were born. So that means it's time to do all their recording and getting them locked into the system. So as I've told uh, our viewers before, we log them all into our Shearwell stock recorder. Um, I transfer the information from my book because I'm old-fashioned and still do use um, manual backup gets transferred onto my stock recorder and then this all gets downloaded onto my computer as well so we are going to put tags in their ears we have a radio tag which are yellow and those are mandatory in Canada for traceability if uh, something goes wrong with this sheep in the system it gets sick or something um, the tag can be um, red and it can be traced back to our farm so that's what that's for we uh, link that traceability tag to our on farm tag and we use different colors in the ears for boys and girls each year uh, so those two are both ewe lambs, so we're going to be giving them white tags because this year the ewes got white tags. And and once that's in there, we uh, we're, those tags are linked to the mother. They're linked to the mother and they're linked to the dad. So we just press save and, at, save and escape. And they're in there. It says she has two live lambs, and that's the mother and father and their date of birth. Okay, um, so not only do we tag them and record them, we uh, also dock their tails. Um, people always ask about docking tails. Do you need to do it? How long do you do it? The answer is you do not need to dock tails, but it is a preference uh, in many countries. It's kind of like a tradition. So um, in Canada, we dock tails. Now it's mandatory that uh, you leave some tail on. I think it's uh, supposed to come to, there's a little, when you lift their tail up, there's a little um, bare patch of skin. You have to kind of dock it no shorter than that skin. I'll show it to you when I'm in the jug anyway. Um, some countries will dock it right off uh, to where the tail leaves the body so they have no tail whatsoever. Um, that's not allowed in Canada anymore as I said and some countries leave it on. Um, 
fly strike is the main reason for taking tails off. Um, but in countries where a fly strike isn't an issue, then it wouldn't really be necessary. Um, we like to leave what I call bunny tails, um, and I'll show you how we do that. And then um, sometimes when you have a lot of lambs, like we have a lot of lambs because we're running about 400, 450 ewes, so that means, say, double that in lambs. So coccidiosis can be a problem in um, group pens, uh, e uh, even though we keep our pens very uh, clean, which does help minimize problems with coccidiosis. But still, just in case, we give them a little um, syringe here, and the syringe is filled with Baycox, which is uh, preventative for coccidiosis, and it seems to work really well. We haven't had coxie here for years and years and years. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And uh, then I'll put uh, a marker spray on the lamb's backs to match the mother's um, number on her back. And that way when they're running in the pen, I can easily identify where the mother and lambs are. And that's all we do in the jug. So let's get over there. Okay, so the purpose for the purpose of video, we've already tagged the first lamb, and now I'll show you the second lamb. So we're going to tag her at the back of the ear. Um, the tags, the labels on the tags say tag at the front, but we found that uh, they rip out easier at the front, and they can also, when they're walking, especially on suffix with their little floppy ears, it can also sometimes poke them in the eye, which we don't want. So we tag them on the back. And also that way when you're taking photos from front on, they're always gonna look really pretty because they won't have a tag in their face. So we'll tag her um, in the ear. I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if we can bring it down. There's, there's little um, ridges and veins in there. Her ears are black, so it's really hard to see on suffix, but you can so feel them. You wanna make sure you don't tag on those uh, veins because they'll bleed a bit. It's not its not the end of the world if you do, but it's preferable if you don't. So I always leave room for tattooing as well because these are registered uh, sheep. So I put it right at the back by the head, which also helps them from ripping out too. And it's just like getting your ears pierced. It's, uh, it's nothing painful or anything like that. Actually backwards. Come on, sweetie. Okay. So as you can see, she still looks pretty until they're in there. But there's her ear tags, you see? Oh, I think I forgot to mention we also give selenium E. It's a quarter of a cc. Um, and we're deficient in that, so not everyone has to give that, but in uh, where we live, we do. So it's under the skin. You just pinch the, the skin into like a little tent. And you go under the skin. And there she goes. Her baycox for the coccidiosis goes in the corner of her mouth. And we just slowly put that in and she drinks it down. There you go. And now we flip her around. These really are big lambs. Remember I thought they were small when they were born because they're just babies, but oh, they're heavy lambs. So now if you can see, see their skin there on that tail and then it goes all wooly. You want the, the, the ring to be right at the end of the skin. So when it, her tail's down, it covers her uh, private parts, and that's where we like to put it. The band goes over. And in a few weeks, um, the bottom will drop off and she'll have a, a nice little bunny tail. Now for the end, we just Put her number. She's 
260. So is her sister. And they match with mom here. Okay. Yeah, so now mom's looking at her. And later on today, Arnie will come and he'll uh, trim the hoops on the mother and give her some dewormer. And these guys will go out in the group pen. And that's what it, what's involved in getting the lambs recorded and ready to leave the jug. Say hi to everybody. I swear she's grown since she was born. So here's the one. She's got her tags on. You can see them down below. And the other one, because she's a little stressed out, she just was handled by me. She's nursing off the mom, and the mom is chewing her cud, so she's releasing her milk. And uh, these guys will get to go play with Kit Kat and Caboodle and the other lambs in the pen uh, later on today. Happily trimming some sheep. And dewormer with Ivamec. Come on, girl. Pay attention. There's a little lamb right behind you, too. Come on. Should I open this that a bit? Help me any. Come on. Come on, girl. Don't. Please. Don't. They don't like their back hoops being done. Because it's very uncomfortable and. Uh, Come on, don't. They don't like their legs pulled up to the front like that. But it doesn't usually take too long, so they just have to deal with it for a few seconds. We do it when they're in the jug because on, it's a lot easier to get them done this way don't. rather than... On, running them through the chute and doing them all at once, which is exhausting. Don't! And you put it in the side of their mouth and just slowly down. You don't shove it down or do, go too fast. So we got one <coughs> lamb up here. Oh, that mom in the group pen's confused because she thinks it's hers. <coughs> Another lamb down, and we're gonna let her <coughs> into the group pen. Okay, come on, mom. <coughs> mom, you don't need to. <coughs> you don't need to come out. Those aren't your lambs. Go on. There, you can take your lammies out. So we let that mom and her lambs out. And right now we're, we've limed it and put new fresh straw out and a new pail of water because we got another one coming. This one looks like a first timer because she's a little more spooky. Remember how quiet the other one was? She's a little more spooky because a first timer. There you go. Good job, Mom. Good job. Now we'll show you how we take care of these. For our first time mother, her udder is a lot bigger than I'd like to see it. So maybe when I scan her, she's not a first timer, but I'm pretty sure she is. I don't know if she'll let me check her udder. Maybe not yet. Hey, sweetheart. Can I check? Yeah, no. Okay. We'll let her calm down a little bit. I'm going to just dip this lamb's navel in iodine. So we're checking to see if she has another lamb, uh, but we're going to check the milk while she's there. But for a first time uh, lamb, that udder is not the kind of udder I like. Not too big. Yeah. I don't know why she'd have an udder that big. She's got milk on both sides. See, you know the, the support in the middle of the udder? Come on. 
doesn't have that support. Uh, it's funny on a first time land. Yeah, she's just blowing the base. She's not, she's a really not a sheep you want to have around. No. Well, she might do it a couple of years. And we'll, well we'll judge her on how well she uh, does her lamb, looks after her lamb. Um, people ask about uh, the age we call and stuff, and I said it does depend on the individual. And normally you'll have udders falling apart um, at eight years plus, but you get the odd one who will lose their udder a lot sooner than that, and some old girls never do. So um, we do try to base it on an individual basis, and uh, when you're looking at poor lambs at weaning, you're going to look um, at the lamb to see... Um, you know, if it was a triplet or if it had some health issues and that's why it's poor, or is it because it just wasn't being looked after well enough by mom, she wasn't giving it enough milk, in which case we'd call that the mother's fault and those would be the ewes we were culling. But it's not a one case fits all, like you have to look at the whole picture and that's why you keep records. Um, so you know exactly what your sheep are doing so you can make educated um, decisions and not just randomly uh, call every ewe that has a bad lamb because uh, not all bad lambs are because of the ewe. So this is a ewe lamb and it's uh, for this is a small mother um, in our Suffolk barn uh, this would be one of our definitely smaller use um, and this is a much bigger lamb so she did a good job delivering this one she is a first timer so she's a little more nervous than the one that just had the twins if you remember how calm and quiet she was this one uh, she's just a little twitchy where is she she's never been in a jug before she's never had a lamb but um I'm going to back out slowly because I prefer her to lay down right now just so she can bond with this lamb and lick it, but she's, uh, she's, she's going to be fine. And did I say this is a ewe lamb? It's a very big ewe lamb. She's a big one. Yeah, you are. Really big. There she goes. She's licking it now. We'll leave them to it, and I'll come back and check them shortly before I leave. Um, you can see that this is a vigorous lamb. Um, it is it is standing up already, which for a Suffolk is very quick, because uh, she literally just had this lamb. Uh, you can see um, the, the, the sack on this lamb is a, yellow, a yellowish color. Mom should lick all that off, but... The yellow means that this was a more difficult birth, which makes sense because she's a first timer, so she would be tighter um, for like the birth canal would be tighter in her pelvis and stuff because she's never had a lamb before, and this is a very big single, so you would expect that. But she did it on her own. We didn't pull this lamb. But the yellow indicates that, um, remember how we wait for that uh, black poop to come out? If you see this yellow on the lamb, the lamb's actually had a poop in the sack because of the difficult birth. But it's trying to get up, so mommy's going to have to deal with this lamb. This lamb wants to get nursing. See, this proves you don't have to be big or have fancy equipment to get the job done. This is um, our corn and bean planter. It's very old, but still does a fantastic job. So, um, Ernie is getting it all ready. Actually, he's getting it ready for barley. So I guess it also does barley too. Isn't that right, Arnie? And this machine is over 30 years old? Yeah, and you think that's old? Someone just called us today who bought Arnie's old corn planter off him. So that one's got to be like 50 years old. Ah, it's 50 years old when I bought it. 
<laughs> okay. It's a sentry machine. <laughs> She's running around the block a few times. So you have to set these pods, eh, for barley's a small seed. So you gotta, I gotta set it up. Gotta take small seed, eh? Which isn't a big deal. And we're gonna be planting, um, what, 30 acres of barley? Yeah, well, 30 acres, maybe, give or take. About 30 acres of barley, and then we're not planting any corn this year because we have a lot left over from last year. So all the rest of our fields are going to be soybeans, and I think that's another, what, how many acres of... 90 acres of beans. About a, 90 acres of beans. So we're not that big uh, compared to some of the farmers, and that's why we have older machinery, smaller machinery, because all that big stuff just isn't necessary here. But uh, we are self-sustaining. Um, this little planter here provides all the sheep, all the sheep feed for us for a year. And it usually also produces surplus so that we can uh, sell some of it off and actually make some money on it as well. And so we're only cropping that was only 30, that's only 120 acres. The problem with this machine here is beans are, bean seed is worth a lot of money. And this machine here, if you drive too fast, some of the beans will go on top of the ground. So it doesn't really do a perfect job in the beans, but it does so like a 95% job. If I had a bean planter, uh, I would probably have a lot better results in, in the population of beans on the acre, but... And what's a bean planter cost? Well, it's like a no-till. You're talking 60,000, 70,000 for a small one, probably. So, so, oh, that, so that. that's why a couple of beans on top of the ground, um, you can't justify it. Unless you're a really monster farmer or you got a lot of money to burn. Um, this is more practical for the everyday um, small farmer, hobby farmer uh, type thing. You can buy these secondhand. They last forever. This, these, this old equipment, it never breaks down. Um, and it does basically just as good a job. So this, so this, this machine here is really made for the old fashioned work in the fields, like plowing and stuff. That, that's what I do. I have no no-tails. But on the flip side of the coin, I really never have a bad crop. But I gotta put a little more into it. So, you know the rule of thumb in life, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. That's right. That's right. That, 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 that goes for your marriage too. Sometimes I think I put too much into the marriage. Sometimes I think not enough. Because the more you give her, the more she wants. No. Well, I think, well, if that rule applies, and I'm thinking the more equipment you let him buy, the more he wants. Hmm. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't even want I, the equipment or the farm. Then you can have it all. Oh, yeah, right. Like, I want it. Yeah, that's right. You don't want it. That's right. I don't. And remember our ra raven? Well, she's up in the crow's nest right now. I don't know if I can zoom in that high, but you can see she's got a nest up there. Boy, this camera's got quite the zoom on it, my new one. But she's up there. She's got quite the fancy nest. And I haven't researched ravens, but I do see that the male and female both seem to be in there looking after the um, babies. She just took off. There she is. Tried to catch moving. There, she just landed again. Must be a little camera shy. But, um, they've never been in the barn going after pigeons in their nest before that I've seen. And this year they're in there all the time. I think, I think they've discovered that and Seriously, you don't see nearly as many pigeons here. And I'm thinking this was what we needed all along. <laughs> anyway, the wind is really, really howling. And you can see, like all farmers, she's, she's taken a cue from them. 
and she's using baler twine because farmers use baler twine for everything and I see she's got baler twine wrapped up in her nest there too. Nothing goes to waste. We actually like this raven. It, it has been around for years and I know people have problems with crows and ravens and we seriously haven't and they do come in the lambing barn when we're lambing and they never have looked at lambs but they look for those placenas and you see them flying out of the barn with the placentas dangling off and they seem to have learned the placenta thing. Anyway, too windy, I can't hold it steady. We're gonna bring you back to the field when we plant this, of course, too. This is what it looks like from the other side. But this is just a, what, 10 foot form planter? 16. That's 16, okay. Bigger than I thought. He definitely has nothing to complain about. And what's this? Oh, these are the little containers where you put the seeds, but I'll show you that when we're loading up. Anyway, he's just doing maintenance, getting ready. Um, I'm gonna head off and do something else because right now my hands are getting them because it looks bright, sunny, and warm, but it's brutally cold. Well, as the day comes to a close and we're just finishing up with night uh, chores, we're going to say good night and hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms.